Welcome and good morning. We're so happy to have you here for another Sunday uh, this morning. Today is also another special Sunday because we actually have another guest speaker. So uh, it's not merely just an English congregation service today, but if you paid attention to the YouTube header, it's actually a combined service. So we're so happy to have our youth. And today we have uh, Counselor Simon, who is also our missions coordinator at church. He's going to be giving us our message through Romans chapter 5. So I'm actually really excited to have him here. Uh, not because I don't have to preach, but <laughs> because he actually gives us uh, really great lessons, and we're looking very much forward to hearing through Romans chapter 5 with him. But as we get started and prepared for that, let's go ahead and do our call to worship this morning. Our call to worship is out of Psalm 62, verses 5 through 7, starting in verse 5. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. O oh God, rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much that we can come here and learn about the reality of our call, the reality of our salvation and the security of it and, and how we are called to play it out in our faith. Father, we just thank you that you have called us to something higher, to live against our flesh, and that you've given us the ability to live according to the Spirit. We're so thankful. We're thankful today for Simon as he's prepared very much, very difficult passage, and he's prepared very much for this. And so we just thank you. We pray that you would help him to proclaim the message and that our hearts would be filled with a love for you. Father, we pray this worship would be acceptable to you, not because our, our hands are just so wonderful and, and capable of giving you worship, but rather because you've declared that sinful creatures can be acceptable before you through Christ. And it is that grace that we depend on this morning. So, Father, we just thank you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us start our time of praise. He will hold me fast 
raised with him to endless life. He will hold me fast till our faith is turned to sight when he comes at last. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast for my Savior lost me so. He will hold morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's great to be back and speak in front of you, uh, our English congregation and our youth ministry. Uh, thank you, Pastor Eric, for your invitation. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Uh, I also thought about last time when I spoke, it was the end of November of last year, and it was the beginning of the Lottie Moon um, week. And then today, it marks the end of the Annie Armstrong Easter Prayer Week. I think God is sending me a message. Anyway, in today's passage from the book of Romans, I have given it a title of Christian Certainty During Uncertain Time. In my mission experience sharing last November, I spoke to you about how little we knew, how, in the, how in, indefensible we are when we were faced with this COVID-19 global pandemic. We were all devastated by something we cannot see, touch, or smell. For the last 12 months, church attendance in worship, Sunday school, and Bible study had dropped significantly, and all other fellowships and other, other types of uh, 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 faith-based activity had been trimmed to a minimal, and then they all turned into online meeting instead. It creates a perfect scenario for the devil to work into our heart and tempted us to depart from our faith and turn to other lustful priorities and pleasures. See, this is what the devil does for a living. The devil is a professional when it comes to stealing, killing, and destroying our Christian joy. Think about this. If our faith is deeply anchored in Christ, and our trust in the power of the atonement that the Jesus provided at the cross, won't we stand firm on our faith and not easily be taken away, even when we're facing this unprecedented pandemic of our time? This reminds me of, of a childhood TV series when I was growing up in Hong Kong. It is called The Ultraman. It is a Japanese series, started broadcasting in the 60s with simple story and very rudimentary costume. For those of us who are not familiar with the name, think of it, it is an Asian version of Superman. A typical episode would goes like this, right? Something was not right happening in one part of the world. It turns out because of an uprising evil monster is destroying life of the thousands. Then of course, our Ultraman show up and then fought the monster. See, the Ultraman has a mission to protect humanity and restore freedom. There came the moment that the Ultraman was about to be zapped and killed. The Ultraman somehow regained his power with his firing energy beam from his cross hands and turned the situation around and destroyed the monster with that lightning power. Peace was then restored in the city, and life is good again. I was attracted to this series because, as a kid, I was growing up in a very poor environment. 
facing a lot of adversities, when watching the Ultraman, it lifted me up from reality for about 30 minutes. It gave me hope and peace about life. It is the same way, it is the same way when we turn to Paul's teaching in today's passage. Romans chapter 5, 1, verse 1 to 11, it reminds us of what our faith in Christ is all about. How it is that we are justified in front of God. It is that important to understand and remember all this we can move through uncertain times, such as COVID, pandemic, and other hardship that each and every one of us experience in one point or another in our lives. So let us turn to this passage and read it together. Verse 1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace at which, in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one who scarcely died for a righteous person, through perhaps for a good person, and would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him for the, from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the faith of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Verse 11. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let us pray. Dear God, we don't know why COVID happened at this point of our life. However, we know that you are in control and will lead us through difficult time as this. We ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. Open our heart and hear your word so that we can be reminded of the precious salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, that the blood of atonement has lifted us free from sin. Your wrath on us has been taken away. We once again are in peace on a firm ground that is filled with joy and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for loving us this much. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, I hope you have seen this scoreboard frame before, right? If you don't know what this is, it's an all-time American favorite show called Family Few. Today, I want to poll from you with this question. Name the top three reason why you should be in heaven. I'll give you a few seconds to think. Okay, here we go. And the survey says... The number one, re number one reason why I should be in heaven is I love Jesus. Isn't that obvious? Of course we do, right? Here's the number two reason. Here's the number two reason I commit to serve. Of course, wow, this is huge. It actually reminds me of my 20 plus years in the Catholic Church while serving in various positions. Well, here's the number of three reasons I have faith. Don't we all? Well, here we are. Do you have similar answers or different answers? This is the moment that I wish we can li we can we we are live we are meeting live, and instead of through the instead of through the screen, so that I can really hear some of your answers, and that will be fun. In today's Paul's passage. Paul taught us something that does not entirely 
align with the popular view of America we just, we just saw. Why? Because we often think logically, and what, ple what pleases us must also be pleasing to God as well. Conven conventionally, it is called self-fulfilling prophecy. For most of us, we think that we need to show our obligation and earn our status in heaven. We often tend to ignore Jesus' teaching, such as the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We always place our experience, knowledge, and wisdom, and talent into serving our God without realizing we should empty our, and humble ourselves first to seek Him before we can ask to serve Him. Today, I'd like to pare down this passage down in three main points for us to meditate on. The first point is we are justified. Second point being new perspective that we earn. And the last one is peace with God despite our unworthiness. So point number one, the first and foremost, we are justified. It's in fact the main theme of the book of Romans. How are we justified then? Well, the previous chapters and sermons from Pastor Eric and Pastor Jeff have established this point very well. In fact, I still remember the two application points that Pastor Eric had reminded us at the, last, at the sermon from last week. We are justified in front of God. It is not by anyone else or anything, we, anything we, we do, but through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then what is exactly that Jesus did to save us? Well, let us look at today's passage. It, it gives us a mini summary of that. When you look at verse number one, we are justified by faith. Chapter three, verse, uh, in verse number two, sorry, refers to grace that we receive from God that justified us. Chapter three marks, uh, verse 24, it makes it more clear that we are in fact justified through grace a free and precious gift for those who believe in him. Lastly, in verse number nine, states that we are justified by his blood of atonement at the cross. The book of Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11 said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Don't we ever forget that God places the salvation power in Jesus' blood. In another word, his life. It is the life of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that makes the atonement of our soul once and for all. Not only had God taken away the depth of our sins, He granted us everlasting righteousness because God treated Jesus as unrighteous through obedience for our sake. Jesus made it clear when He instituted the Lord's Supper when he spent his last evening with all of his disciples. As described in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 28, Jesus declared that this is, this is, um, this is, the, this is his blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So we don't, so don't we ever forget the precious blood of atonement from the Son of God. We are justified once and forever in Jesus. Nothing else needs to be added as recorded in John chapter 19, verse 30. That's what Jesus meant on the cross when he took his last breath and said, it is finished. Justification means removal and freedom from condemnation. Let us remember this. Let us remember that this justification brings us into the kingdom of God and confirms that we stand in the firm ground of grace in front of God. It is a position, not a condition. 
that Jesus put us there in exchange for his life. It does not change with time or conditions. Survival Kit. It is part of the Youth Alive Sunday School curriculum for our young adults. I'm sorry, for our youth right after baptism. There is always a sense of false comfort right after this big event in our life when we started a new life in Christ. We typically coach our youth to recognize and not to fall into this trap, so-called honeymoon stage. Our future spirit, spiritual growth depends on our own intimate, personal, loving relationship with Christ. Now this leads us into the second point, new perspective. When Jesus took his last breath on the cross, said, it's finished, the veil in front of the Holy of the Holies was torn. At that moment, we sinners are no longer represented by the high priest to plead to God because our own high priest, Jesus Christ, sacrificed ourselves for us on the cross. We now come clean with our sins being washed away and God's wrath against us has been addressed. We now are able to reconcile with God once again. That is why the gospel is a good news because Jesus opened a new path for us to reconcile with God and give us a brand new perspective towards eternity. It is exactly how Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 said, describes. It marks the beginning of a new covenant. But it is a little strange or unconventional when you read the next passage. How can anyone rejoice in suffering? For example, in verse number 3. How do you do that? Well, we need to go back to verse, to start with verse number 2, where Paul first established that we now have access to God through our faith in Christ. As such, we, now, we are now secure in the ground of grace. It is like we just become a lifetime member of, a, of the most expensive country club, where we now have access to all sorts of amenity and the noble status. Because of this ground or position, if you will, I can now be rejoiced both internally and spiritually, even when I suffer. Because I know the ultimate outcome will far away the suffering when I'm looking far beyond the sky and being heavenly minded. Just a word of clarification. I'm not describing the feeling of drug overdose or being drunk. It is in this spirit that I can help to think. I can't help to think about a few people who fit the description of the scripture very well. So what do you th what do you think So what do you think these people have in common? Apostle Paul, previously named Saul, encountered Christ our Lord when he was on his way to Damascus and trying to persecute more Jewish Christians. After he regained his eyesight in three days later, Apostle Paul was a completely changed person. He was unstoppable and relentless when in spreading the good news among the Jews and the Gentiles all over Europe at that time. When you read the book of Acts, you will realize that it wasn't a smooth sailing, right? As we all know. As recorded in the Second Corinthians chapter 11, Paul summarized all the sufferings that he experienced when spreading the gospel throughout Europe and eventually died for, the faith, for his faith in Christ. As said in Second Corinthians here, and this is how Paul views suffering in Christ. Elizabeth Elliot is the wife of Jim Elliot. In January of 1956, Jim and four other missionaries were killed while trying to bring Christianity to an isolated tribe known for their violence in the rainforest of Ecuador. Several years later, the widow of Jim Elliot, Elizabeth, returned to Ecuador 
as missionary with their daughter Valerie for many years. This eventually led to the conversion of many of these tribal natives, including some of those involved in killing of Jim and his partners. While exposing the tribe to increased influence from the outside, their efforts largely eliminate tribal violence. Nick Voyagech, not just born without limbs, Nick suffered from depression to isolation for being disabled. When he was growing up in Australia, he didn't let his, this inconvenience stop him. He turned out to be one of the most inspirational speakers in the world. Nick is blessed with a beautiful wife and four healthy children. The hug that he gave, it, the, the hug that he gives at the end of every speech become an instant encouragement to the heart of millions he touches. Not only that, do you know that Nick can write? He can play drum. He plays soccer. He golfs and swim. I didn't show he can skydive and he can type faster than you and I. And plenty more. Clearly, Nick is living a more abundant life than most of us who have perfect limbs. Knowing these people, we now had a bit more appreciation of what Paul is saying about suffering. Brings forth endurance. Endurance produces characters. And characters produces hope. Without going through a progressive journey of trials, without through time with laser focus on the end goal, which is the hope of fellowship with Christ and the union with him in the end. You will never show your perseverance and character. And then there's this added bonus of the Holy Spirit. Ever since the moment Jesus, that we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our life, we open our heart for the Holy Spirit so that we can bear witness and stay sanctified until the second coming of Christ. As recorded in Gospel of John chapter 13, verse 16, Jesus promised that he will ask the Father and he will give us another helper to be, uh, to be with us forever. Jesus further promised, in ch as said in chapter 14, sorry, I should have advanced right, that the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will, spend, will send in his name, he would teach us things and brings to his remembrance, bring to our remembrance all that he said to us. So let us <clears throat> keep this new perspective <clears throat> and changes our entire values system and respond to the grace we receive from our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will guide us through life since it is the down payment for the second coming of Christ. So take full advantage of it. The third point being that we are able to restore peace with God despite our unworthiness. Let us review the passage again. Paul went on an extent to plead his case about who we really are, and I have highlighted these words, these points here. Weak, ungodly, sinners, and enemies. Does this sound like the character of someone that you want to save? What does weak mean? Jesus dying on the cross was while we are weak. I ask that you reflect back to the low points in your life. For on, do, on those days when you are self-initiating, self-motivating, self-reliance, and most of all, not trusting in God. Have you ever felt that there does not seem to be an easy way out with no open door, no matter how hard you try, it is still not good enough. Trouble always seems to find its way at your doorstep at the time you really do not need it. You also, you are lost, <clears throat> you feel tired, worthless, and trapped. It is like there is another marathon waiting for you to run as soon as you just finish one. There seems to be no end. By now, we can safely conclude that Paul 
is referring the weak as unfaithful. I'm certain that you remember this exchange between Jesus and one of the thieves on the cross. He is now on the cross, on the side with Jesus. The thief certainly could not do any work to qualify himself for the eternal reward of heaven. Jesus simply told the thief that he would be with him in paradise that very day. Jesus paid the full price for our sins on the cross. Just like this thief, we are saved and made ready for heaven by faith in Jesus. His atonement work on the cross. No one can replace him for saving us. As I reflect on verse 11 about rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like to share a personal testimony with you. In November 2013, Suzelle and I decided to celebrate our 25th silver wedding anniversary. It was not for any reason other than witnessing God's grace and presence in our marriage. We thank God for leading us through a difficult and challenging time. Believe me, there is no shortcut to a marriage. It, it, it takes a lot of trials, endurance, and character-building events to make it happen. To top it off, God had granted us our precious heritage, our two beautiful sons, Ryan and Nathaniel. As a result of the atonement of Jesus, shed his precious blood on the cross, he, we all receive reconciliation and are able to restore our relationship with God as he originally intended to pass on from Adam and Eve to us. It is very much the same way because of his salvation that God gives us rejoice and hope in our marriage. Because of his blood atonement, and we now have hope in, to live through our marriage, live through our marriage vow until death do its part. I'd like to end my sharing this morning that it is this very mindset we should have. After reading this passage from the book of Romans and continue to meditate every day of this Christian certainty. Jesus died to save us, and he lives to keep us. It is why eternity starts right after we accept Jesus as our Savior and the Lord of our lives. At the very same moment, our spirit is awakened by the introduction of the Holy Spirit, living inside us until the second coming of Christ. We can now rejoice while sojourning on earth because of this Christian certainty, and we are in peace and serenity with God at all times. Through the, through the guiding light of the Holy Spirit, we now are okay in God, with God. No more wrath against us when we anchor our faith in Jesus and look forward to the second coming of Christ. And there it is the moment when the salvation come to completion. Brother and sister in Christ, the world is becoming darker and worse. Let us pray for each other and act out of this teaching from Apostle Paul so that the devil cannot, can no longer has any chance to tempt us. We will, double, we, we will never doubt or even question against about these. We will never doubt or even question against about these building blocks of our own faith. And then when we are evangelizing to the unbelievers, we will be able to, we will be so filled with confidence to lead them to Jesus and defeat the devil's plan entirely, bringing more people to cry salvation through faithful Christian is in fact the mystery of God's plan to defeat the devil. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the richness of your word through today's message from the book of Romans. We thank you for reminding us 
of the ground that we stand on when our faith is justified in you, Jesus. Your flesh was given up for us, and you shed your blood to, clean, uh, to cleanse our sin. We are so unworthy to receive you. We can only respond to such precious grace by reminding, uh, reminding ourselves every day of the core of the gospel, this good news, and committing to carry out the Great Commission as the destinator, as the destinating, as the destinator beneficiaries of your grace. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed day. So, thanks so much, Simon, for expertly guiding us through Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 11. And thanks for highlighting all those words. They really made the passage stand out to me and helped me better understand uh, the passage. And I guess th this year is your 33rd year of marriage. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to go into the closing worship and song. And after that, we'll come back for the announcements. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not, as thy hands to me in the forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, long to me.
welcome back and now we're going to go into time of announcements and first of all if you're new if you're, if you're viewing this video for the first time uh, do fill out the connect form for us so that we can get in touch with you you can pause and take down the link or take a picture of the qr code and also online giving is available in three different options once again you can pause and take a picture of the qr code to get to the website that provides the three different options for donating online and now we're going to do some announcements that are related to the whole church and the first is this uh, today is the last day of the north american missions prayer uh, so you can find the prayer guide either on our website or the anyarmstrong.com website which is listed there and we're still collecting the any armstrong easter offering our goal as a church is to raise fourteen thousand dollars for 2021 and please make make your checks write them to acbc and indicate the any armstrong offering on those checks and just a reminder of where uh, the donations are going to and which areas uh, in North America that the North American Missions Board is focused on. So you can pause and take a quick look at the different uh, areas and the ministries that uh, that North American Missions Board is focused on. And also, if you're interested in how uh, these uh, donations are used, uh, here is a list of, uh, of, uh, of items which the North American Missions Board um, has that provides for the missionaries. It could be little things like anniversary gifts, gifts for a missionary couple, or it can be a big, big thing like providing Bibles and gospel tracts and discipleship materials to the community that they're serving. So this is how uh, the money will be used. So do uh, donate and help us as a church to reach that $14,000 goal for 2021. And furthermore, for church announcements, uh, on Good Friday, that's the 2nd of April in three weeks' time, uh, join us as we remember the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it starts at 7.30 p.m., uh, so stay tuned for more information. We're finalizing the details uh, for this Good Friday service. It will be a joint uh, service between the youth and the English congregation. Uh, Chinese congregation will have a separate Good Friday service. Uh, but for Easter Sunday service, it will be a whole church service for, with all the congregations involved. It will be on the 4th of April. So join us as we c celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it starts at 10.30 a.m. So we'll have the link out uh, next week. So stay tuned for that. It starts at 10.30 a.m. on the 4th of April. So you get to sleep in a little bit. And a uh, reminder, and now it's... Uh, and now announcements that's related more for our uh, English uh, ministries. Uh, so remind, reminder, of outdoor service is ongoing, and the service starts in the courtyard on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. Uh, the chairs are physically distanced apart, six feet, at least six feet apart. Uh, you can book your seats online. Do book your seats online so that uh, we know who, has, uh, who, who comes for each service. Uh, masks have to be worn at all times. Do not come if you're feeling any way unwell, whether a fever or a cough or, or any of those symptoms do not come if you're feeling unwell. But if you do come, please wear masks and keep your children uh, with you. Soon we'll be moving to the live streaming of the English Outdoor Service onto, YouTube, uh, onto this YouTube channel as well as on Zoom. Uh, so stay tuned for that. It could be happen as possibly as soon as uh, next Sunday uh, if our testing today of the live streaming has gone well. Uh, and it will be on this YouTube channel, so you don't have to search around. So the live streaming will be broadcast on this uh, YouTube channel. So stay tuned for the email uh, updating you on, on that situation. And again, to register for the outdoor services, you can pause and take a picture of the QR code. It'll take you to the link, which is also there, uh, to, to register for tickets uh, for the outdoor service. And uh, just a reminder, uh, for the live streaming, once we move to that, uh, there will be no more uh, recorded services like this for the English uh, congregation. Uh, we'll, we'll just move straight to live streaming, and, uh, the, and it'll be online live broadcast of the outdoor service. Uh, the Zoom ID is there, and, or you can go to our usual ACBC YouTube channel. In fact, if you're, watching this, uh, if you're watching this video right now, you're already on our ACBC YouTube channel, so just come to this channel, and you can watch the live stream of the Sunday's outdoor services. So possibly starting next week, I'll update you via email. And a reminder that Adult Sunday School uh, starts, restarts today, not starts, restarts today at 11.15 a.m. Uh, so we'll be going through First and Second Chronicles. I'll be teaching that. I'm really excited. I've, 
I've uh, put in my hours of uh, preparing for this uh, Sunday school, and I'm really looking forward to teaching it. Uh, I love history, and I love teaching from Kings and Chronicles. So the new Zoom ID, please note the new Zoom ID is listed there as well as the, well, the passcode is still the same, uh, but the new Zoom ID is listed there. Just a reminder that all our, uh, our Zoom accounts are being consolidated as a church, so we do have new Zoom IDs for our different meetings. So this is the new one for the adult Sunday school, so pause and take down that number for adult uh, Sunday school. Uh, for youth Sunday school, still on, right? So youth Sunday school still on, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, right? Yeah, they better show up. Okay, <laughs> please show up at 11 o'clock. Don't show up at 11.15. 11.15 is for the adult Sunday school. 11 o'clock is for the youth. So if you're youth, please show up for Sunday school at 11 o'clock. And just a heads up, uh, what's coming uh, in March and April, uh, and uh, the combined services, uh, as well as uh, guest speakers are there. If there's no guest speaker listed, yours truly will be preaching. So th that will be the schedule for the next uh, two months. So heads up as we go into spring. And uh, last but not least, uh, prayer requests. Do continue to pray for the recovery and safety our, of our community from the pandemic. Uh, continue to pray for this vaccine rollout. Uh, it's been up and down. So let's just pray that uh, things will get smoother as the supplies get more and more people, more and more people in our community can get vaccinated. And continue to pray for job and financial security for our church members. And let's continue to keep Roger's uh, mom in prayer. The latest update is that the operation was successful. And continue to pray for her recovery as well as the treatment uh, that she's going through and do keep his, uh, him and his family in prayer. And also let's keep uh, Jay in prayer as he makes a full recovery from the heart operation. Let's keep in, him and his family in prayer too. And that's it for prayer requests. Now is the time of doxology. So glad to have had Simon here to give us such a wonderful message and let us remember to take the spirit seriously. What does it cause me to do? It cause me to trust and to have faith and to live that I might live for Christ. So I count all as loss and I gain nothing but Christ. Let us pray as we close our service today. And uh, we'll get you guys out of here. Dear Father, thank you so much for just an opportunity to remember the empowering nature of the Holy Spirit. And that by your love for me, I can have faith and boldness that I can go. And that I could do the things that I could not do in the flesh. Father, thank you that you empower me just to be good for your pleasure. And Father, we pray these things, and we thank you for them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Until we see you next week, God and his peace be with you.